Tony Schwartz is here. The Art of the Deal was his book about Donald Trump. He is a journalist known for a lot of magazine articles that he has written. He went on an exploration to sort of find himself and to find out what he could about searching for wisdom in America. His book, What Really Matters, is now in paperback, and I am pleased to have him back to talk about uh, what more he has learned about what really matters and also a little bit about Michael Eisner. He is now writing a book with Michael Eisner, which will be sort of a definition of, of Eisner and his impact on business and the life that he has lived to be uh, one of the powerful and, and preeminent forces in American business and certainly in American communications. Welcome back. Thanks a lot. It's, uh, tell me what, you and I have talked about this book and, and um, what have you added to it, having looked at this and experienced this and gone out and, and in a sense, it's a great story. You went through therapy for a, for a while and, and in a sense said, I'd like to find out more. Pick up the story for me in terms of what's in here and what you found out about what interests me is performance in life. Well, I went out, Charlie, as you know, looking for some kind of answer to fill what I felt was a void even after writing a huge best-selling right. book with Trump. And Making uh, more money than you ever thought you'd make for writing. Yes. Did, to, to my surprise, it didn't last all that long, <laughs> but at the time it seemed like it was a big deal. And. Uh, I went and explored everything from meditation to biofeedback to dream work to different kinds of human performance exercises, looking for what it was that everybody had a different idea about what the nature of transformation was. And I felt that none of it was, uh, uh, there was no source that was really credible. So if I would go out and spend an extremely uh, sustained period of time, five years as it turned out, not only talk to the people who were sort of one piece or another of this puzzle of transformation I was looking at, but also doing their practices. I could come back, not only have some impact on my own life, which I did in a very dramatic ways, but also be able to write in effect a, a credible consumer guide to all of these different uh, approaches. Tell me what you found. <laughs> I basically found, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump right to what you asked me earlier, which is in the period even since I finished this book, what have I added to this puzzle? I basically found that there are, as it turns out, components of this transformative process, and usually those people who are interested in some kind of transformation, whether it's inner transformation or outer transformation, focus on one piece to the exclusion of others. For example? Self-awareness is obviously the ground of all work that you do on transformation. It's very important. In order to know yourself better, you, here you are sitting on the, on the camera today with this very uh, smooth and uh, uh, bright uh, persona. What's underneath that? Who are you underneath that? Smooth, bright persona. <laughs> Smooth, bright persona. Bless you. Uh, so I was interested in what was underneath my own exactly. persona. I had right. a way of being in the world. Who was I really? There are all kinds of ways that you can explore that. Therapy, dream work, right. meditation is even a and source of doing that. And you explored every one of them. I explored every now, one. Let me just stop the story right there. Which one of all that had the biggest impact for you? Which Therapy, the dream therapy, all that stuff. Well, actually, the that answer journey on self-awareness. Um, I would say I can't pick a I can't pick a single practice because I think one by itself isn't what did it. What had such a dramatic effect on me was the recognition that I couldn't settle for one way, yeah. and that meditation opened a certain level of awareness. Uh, uh, certain kinds of therapy opened another kind of awareness, and dream work opened yet a third. Mm. Um, but that isn't all there is to it. Self-awareness is very important. There's a second component of transformation, character. What's that? All right, so character is uh, the outer expression, your behavior in the world, your capacity to behave well in the world. Turns out, fascinatingly, that you can have an extraordinary level of self-awareness and still act terribly in the world, have bad character. You can know yourself very well, but still not act on your knowledge. On the other hand, you can have terrifically good character with a great deal of ignorance about who you really are. It can simply be instinctive. Right, now, help me understand that in terms of, so you've got self-awareness. You know who you are. You know what drives you. You know what makes you tick. You know what you want to do. And you are honest with yourself about all that. Yes. Good you, start. You've got that. That's a good start. Now, yep. character is, is a reflection of your values, a reflection of yep. how you conduct yourself in public and private, yes. a sense of your respect for... 
your it's other all, human beings? All, all of those things are components of character. What's interesting about character is that in order to express good character, in order to behave well in the world, you may have to act actually in violation of what you've come to understand about yourself through your own self-awareness. You may have to be conscious enough, aware enough, no. and, and using practices, what I call cultivating the virtues, such that you can act in opposition to how you feel without losing touch with how it is you feel so that you can work that material through. Uh, it's, there, is a whole, there are a whole set of practices that serve good character. And part of being a complete human being, and part of what I would call an integral practice, and what is very rarely uh, seen in the world of people who do this kind of work, is recognizing that both of these two pieces are important. Now, there's a third piece. And the third piece is the one that may interest you the most. I would call that performance. Right. That's the capacity to summon the specific thoughts, emotions, and physical uh, sensations or physical capacities necessary to achieve a specific outcome in the world. That could be in your work. That could be very commonly on the sports field. It could be in any situation in which an outcome matters. And it turns out that as surely as you can develop muscles by lifting weights, you can develop specific thoughts and emotions that serve optimal performance. Hey, weightlifting. You said to me when I saw you after your last appearance, you had discovered weightlifting as an additional element. What's it done for you? It's the single most important physical exercise you can do right now. There is no surer way to reverse your biological age, no matter what your age is, including 90, than doing weight training. Now, now why, how did you get smart about this, and why do you know this to be true? Because I've started to read very widely. When I recognize that the uh, only way to truly transform is through an integrated practice, you've got to do spiritual work. You have to do work with the mind and the body, but, uh, with the mind, but you also have to work on the body. And when I did that, I began to look more closely at what it is that served it best. One of the best people who's written, one of the people who's written about this most effectively is do, uh, Dr. Bob Arnott. Right. In his book about uh, reversing biological age, he particularly emphasizes weight training. Uh, Michael Eisner, of all, what, in summary, does he have that makes him, on any survey, the most powerful man in Hollywood and one of the preeminent business forces in America? Well, I hope in great detail this book is going to answer that question, but I'll give you the one-minute answer. Uh, a couple things. Number one, a remarkable capacity to go his own way, to be unaffected, particularly in an environment in Hollywood in which there's an enormous pressure to do what the other guy does and to win his approval. Eisner li really, to, a, to an amazing degree, lives within his own belief system and is not affected by what others think, number one. Number two, he has a... a overwhelming focus on the creative aspects of what it is to be a great businessman as opposed to simply focusing on the financial aspects and so the overwhelming percentage of his time is spent dealing with animated movies going in and the, planning the design of a store working with the architecture uh, as it relates to the buildings that Disney does yeah. so he's a remarkable creative force what really matters searching for wisdom in America a journey that Tony Schwartz took it is now in paperback. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. We'll be right back, taking a look at Broadway with Wendy Wasserstein, taking a look at business with the widow of Reginald Lewis. Stay with us.
I think I ate something that I'm allergic to. Then again, I was working up a sweat and I'm allergic to work. That might be what it is, I don't know. Seriously, I feel like I, like I ate, like I drank some milk or something. Oh well, I'll live. Anyways, might have been this uh, pulled pork pizza I got from the restaurant in town. You heard that right, pulled pork pizza. Oh, it's delicious. Check this thing out, check this thing out. One second. Pulled pork pizza, I know you can't really see it because it's all under cheese, but there's barbecue sauce, onions, pulled pork, and all kinds of other goodness in there. Oh, is it so good, it's so good. I wonder if I'm allergic to it. I'm getting that red stuff on my face again, it's burning. Mm. Anyways, I have a special project I've been working on. Pretty excited to show you guys. I built a Camaro. No, I'm just kidding. There's a seat in my garage. There is a passenger seat in my garage. What? There's something different in my truck. Dun, 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 dun. Can you see it? What is different in here? I can't put my finger on it. I can't put my seat on it. I don't know. You know what I mean? I just can't sit down on what's different. I, I mean, it just seems so roomy in here. So roomy. <laughs> There's no passenger seat. Did you guess that? Two points to you. Once you get ten points, nothing happens. Just so you know. So let's see this from like my upper bunk. How about that? So, this is what it looks like from up here. All that room for the boys now. Oh, it's gonna be so much more room. More like an RV now. I like it a lot better. Don't need a second seat anyways. I never have any passengers. <laughs> And I left my seat in there, I figured it'd be more comfortable if I left that in there. I don't really like standing and driving, it just doesn't feel safe to me. Well, there we go. So until Sergeant is completely potty trained, he's getting there. I'm still leaving this down here for him. Uh, Diesel's got his little space in there, and I've got my room up here. And they've also got all this space down here now. I think I'm going to lay puppy pads down. There's puppy pads underneath this. I think I'm gonna put puppy pads on top of this too. I just don't like doing that because Sergeant rips them up right away. Thinks that they're a toy. Thinks everything's a toy. A crazy animal. And this is what it looks like once I put the puppy pads in. Looks the same underneath the towels and now on top of the towels did it again. These are also scented pads that I get from Walmart so it actually makes the truck smell really nice. Usually Sergeant finds a corner and then starts ripping it all to shreds within the first day or two but for now, I'm, I'm trying. I'm just really hoping that this isn't going to tell him that it's okay to pee on the floor. Like, that's not why they're there. They're not there so you can pee on the floor. They're there just in case you pee on the floor. Because if he starts to think that it's okay to pee wherever he wants, because there's puppy pads everywhere, well then we got a problem. It's a fine line, a delicate line. We'll figure it out though. I'm sweating, I want to go inside. I just want to show you this. You see what I do? I tape them down. I tape them to the towels beneath them and I tape them together. So they, they hold longer that way. At least I'm telling myself I will. <laughs> hey Diesel. How you like the new setup here, man? So much more room. You got so much more room, man. How am I supposed to see out the window, man? How am I supposed to draw my window out now? Oh, like I got a little window in the corner over there. Sorry, Diesel. You'll just have to make do. You can see out the windows, see? Oh, just, who's there? Who's there, Diesel? Who's there? See, you can still see out the window. There's nobody there. Oh, who's there, man? You asked me, who's there? Who is it? There's nobody there, Diesel. Sergeant, you're almost to the point where I can trust you, I believe. Almost. And you won't have to be in there all the time. Right? <laughs> you're not in there all the time. I put him in there now because I was loading up my truck. And it's just safer to have him in there because he's a puppy with mush for brains. Got a couple of neurons firing around in there. They're mostly for peeing and pooping like I was telling you the other day, but that's about all he does, right? <laughs> man, guy, you're so mean, man. You're so mean. Just a little guy. Go easy on him, man. Just a little guy. So we're about to leave. We got our truck all set up here. 
And oh, is there ever a lot of room to stretch out here? Look at this, look at this, look at this. So I put his bed down there for now. We'll probably move things around a couple of times yet, but the garbage there, toys everywhere, food there. For now, he's still peeing when he's not supposed to pee. So this will probably be the last trip that he'll be in here. I don't know, I can't promise nothing, but until I can trust you, buddy, because I want my bed back, so it's in my best interest to help you along, right? He's a good boy. Such a good boy. You've gotten a lot better, man. You've gotten a lot better. You're a good boy. Good boy. Can you sit? Sergeant? Sergeant, can you sit? Oh, good boy. Can you lay down? All the way down. Lay down. Not off the bed. No. Down. Sergeant, lay down. Oh, good boy. Good boy. See, he's getting there. He's getting there. Week or two, buddy, and you'll be able to hold that bladder. And we'll be off to the races, and I'll have my bed back. Good boy. Anyways, let's get going. It's time to leave. Well, we've just arrived here in Grand Forks, North Dakota. America. And my, they've got their music just blasting out here. You hear that? On their speakers, their loudspeakers? This is not terrible music, could be worse, they could be like blasting some other stuff. <laughs> oh, then they probably lose a lot of business. But man, I'm in Grand Forks and we got a long way to go yet, so I'm not gonna spend too much time talking to you guys here. No offense or anything, but we got a long way to go. I'm gonna fuel up and go. Alright, let's get back onto the freeway here. I do have the yield. I guess I should obey the law and yield. One more, come on, Ferd. Hurry up, Ferd. You gonna make it? You gonna make it? Almost had to call a Chevy to come get him through that intersection a little faster. <laughs> Anyways, yep, just leaving Grand Forks here. Getting back on the road, headed south on Interstate 29. We're going to be going uh, up to Fargo, North Dakota, then turning east, traveling into Minnesota, and then down into Iowa. And we'll probably sleep in Iowa somewhere tonight. We're all set. We stopped here. We got some Subway. We got us the chicken ranch sandwich, whatever you call it. Continue 119 kilometers foot long on Italian herb and cheese toasted, lettuce, onion, and tomato, and ranch sauce. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. So I'm coming up to Minneapolis here. Uh, we're, well, getting close to it anyways, we're getting close to St. Cloud. I guess we're not quite that close yet. Whatever. We're getting there. It's been kind of disappointing. I lost my sunshine as soon as I got into Minnesota. Rain, rain, nothing but rain. Minnesota. But look how green everything is, eh? Minnesota always reminds me a lot of Manitoba, or eastern Manitoba, uh, just with a lot more people. A lot more people. They don't have the same kind of wilderness. They do have patches of wilderness here and there, but it's just not the same. To me, anyways. I mean, it's not like I explored a lot. I'm sure they got some really good good wild open spaces with no people. The world is such a big place. Such a big place. Like I'm only one state below Manitoba. Like This state touches Manitoba. And I already feel like I'm in a whole different, different place, different world, you know? So many people everywhere, different flags.
guys enjoying the bigger floor space it's a mess in here already guys you got your toys all over the place diesel's got his little area there for now I've just sort of put the water jugs there they go through like a gallon of water a day these two Jeez, you guys are hard to keep up with man <laughs> this guy he's just huge already huge you are huge man good thing I took that seat out how would we fit you in here otherwise <laughs> oh, but we are in uh, Clear Lake Iowa Clear Lake guys it is the lake that is clear absolutely I like this hat not bad not bad it feels comfy too it's like a custom fit one size fits all type deal I like it should probably bend it and bend, bend, I don't know I should like the way it is anyways so uh we made it a full day down here we're in Iowa just like we thought we would be uh, from here we can make it down to Memphis in just over one day so we'll get close by tomorrow and then we'll go the last hour or so the next day in the morning I gotta be in Memphis for 10 30 a.m. I believe they're in central time I should double check that yet to make sure that I'm not late but yeah Good drive today. It's raining almost all day. Rain, 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 and then more rain. And then when you thought it was like finished, oh no, there comes another one. More rain. All the way from Fargo, all the way down to Iowa here. It's rain. But apparently at home, I talked to my mom back at home. She's at the campground uh, at our seasonal campsite there. And it's been beautiful weather there. 28 degrees Celsius, like 80 Fahrenheit all day. Beautiful evening, no rain, clear skies. So at least they're enjoying it at home. I had enough time at home for a while. I need to... Uh, make some miles now so for Memphis I'm guessing I'll probably go over to Georgia they haven't told me that yet but I'm just assuming because that's usually what happens and from there I hear there's a good chance I'll be headed west from there so maybe I can make it home I do have a dentist appointment and a vet appointment for the boys uh, on Friday so it would be nice to make it home for that I would hate to reschedule it again I would really like to get these things clean you know, get them checked out make sure everything's okay and I'm sure I need a filling or two because my I don't know. I always do. I don't, I'm bad for cavities. I do brush my teeth every day. It's just, I don't know. They find me. It's cavities. They hunt me down. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me today. It's been a great day so far. This new setup in the truck here has been working really well. It's just been the first day. So we'll see how it goes the rest of this trip. I have a really good feeling about it. I've really liked it today. Diesel can still see out. He's big enough. Sergeant has the side window down there beside Diesel. As most of you are concerned, all you guys are concerned about is how are they going to see outside? There's a window down there. Diesel can still sit up and see out these windows. Even when he's standing straight, he can rest his chin on there. And uh, there's also a window back there. So when Sergeant's like hanging out in his pen here, because I leave this door open, right? He can hop up here, sleep on his pillow. And he can look out that window there. So, it works. But thanks for joining me, guys. Tomorrow, 4 a.m. Central Time, we're going to continue from this exact spot. I hope we don't move. We should be in this exact same spot when we start tomorrow. And we're headed down to Tennessee. I'll see you then. Don't forget to go down below to the description. Click some links. There's vlogs from the past all the way up to a year ago. See what I was doing on this day exactly a year ago. Mm -hmm.